Capcom. And with the strength of the GE Tigers right now, that their next match is certainly not a foregone conclusion in favor of Najin by any means. And so, therefore, they need to take out somebody ahead of them, and it has to be CJ and Janair, effectively. So yeah. if they lose tonight, too, it's going to be pretty near impossible for them to come back and make the playoffs. It's a good point. The season's more or less on the line for Najin in this game. Callista ban, of course, against OQ. We talked about that earlier. Certainly a must ban against Najin right now. That Vagar ban as well. We're still on 5.3 until the week after next. Yeah, apparently Kane really not very comfortable with that champion. Yeah. And Rumble will be banned. Again, a bit of a surprise considering that CJ has really emphasized that Rumble pick in earlier matches. Not shy, not wanting to grab it this time around, so we see the same bands LeBlanc or Cassiopeia coming in from Najee. It will be uh, Victor instead. I was wondering if we were going to see that Victor ban. So a bit of his curveball from CJ. Nobody knew really that Coco could play Victor. He hasn't debuted professionally previously. So now Najin, if they invented a game plan against his Ezreal, which did at the earlier stages of the draft look like a possibility in the last game, they'll feel more comfortable against that. But he's going to get LeBlanc or Cassiopeia available to him this game. Yeah, this uh, Victor ban does open up a lot of potential first picks for CJ. There's a Zareth ban against Tank. And I'm just really curious to see if they're going to have Tank try to play something in a more, you know, engaged sort of style again, or if they're just going to give him something safer, you know, a Lulu, a Karthus. I think that would be definitely a better plan at this point. Tank did look like not the strongest player, a little bit confused about when he should engage, how he should engage on that Lissandra. Yeah, looked nervous, which is something we really haven't seen from him yet. All right, Cassidy ban. That's a bit of a surprise considering that CJ hasn't really been playing around Cassidy very well in their last few matches. They haven't seen a lot of success with that champion, even if Coco can get him into the mid and late game without too much of a deficit. They really have failed to make plays when using that pick. Rek'Sai, Will be taken first. Okay. The Maokai pickup for Duke would not be bad at all. Although Shy can play Mundo, and Shy is such a good Mundo player, it was prioritized for bans by many, many teams. And Maokai Corky will head over to Najin. So we've seen OQ really like to take some of the counter picks to Corky in the past, and now instead he wants to grab it himself. Had some great laning success last game in that matchup with Lucian. Well, saw them hovering over that Sejuani for a moment. Somebody's been watching some uh, EU LCS apparently. <laughs> I think you uh, you take the LeBlanc here yeah. if you're Coco. You, he hasn't even had a chance to play LeBlanc in such a long time. It has just banned every single game. It's such a safe all-around pick, and it's one of his best champions. Certainly grab it at this point in the draft if you can. You know, they may not be too worried about Tank taking that one, too. You know, with how his Lissandra play kind of ended out. I don't know if LeBlanc is a big threat, but it looks like they will go ahead and grab those two, waiting for the lock-in. And we'll see if Mad Life picks up that that Nami. Be interesting. Yeah, I think you grab there the Lulu. Yeah. Take the Lulu, try and attack Tank's champion pool just a little bit. Of course, Shy has shown that he is a fantastic Lulu in the top lane as well. Yeah, it's really been Lulu and Mundo that Shy has stood out on in the regular season. Yeah, his mount guy last game was great as well. In sure. terms of zoning out the back line, he definitely did a lot more than Duke. Granted, he had better team fighting for the rest of his teammates as well. I think Duke did a good job with what he was given in that game. I'm still waiting to see Shy bring out that Kale again. You know, it worked well in the preseason, but no interest in that in the regular season. And are they going to put Tank back on that Lissandra? I'm thinking they probably are. I mean, and Korean teams do this a lot. You know, if somebody has a bad game on something that they haven't done a lot of, usually they give them another chance. I don't, don't know. know if that's always it wise. Was, it was really not very good last game. And also, Jarvan is still available, and I feel that that would be a better draft here than going for this Lee Sin. Yeah, if you're going to play Lissandra too, especially, but he's going to grab the Lee Sin. Okay. Watch has played uh, pretty much mostly Lee Sin for the foreseeable past. Or the foreseeable past. No sense at all. <laughs> I have magical powers. Doe has escaped the timeline. That's right. I Past exist. and future have combined. I exist independent of time and space. 
I am now the Omni Doa. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Oh, space on Kogma. Well, they are going to give it a try, maybe. This is a, this is a Juggermaw comp. This is, it certainly is. We've seen the LeBlanc with the Juggermaw run by GE Tigers. They may give it a shot here. Of course, Nami or Janna, the preferred champion, sort of deal with that. Nami does give you some nice punch in the laning phase. Wow, okay. Can space no one, handle it? No one has <laughs> run the Juggermaw except for GE. Many have tried, all have failed. I know, yeah. Only Prey can handle the Kog'Maw, but Space is gonna give it his best try. His Callista didn't work out too well. I don't know about this one. I don't know about this. I, think I have my doubts. I have my doubts. Not only because no one else has been able to handle this composition, but Space especially has had issues with positioning in the past. His Callista wasn't that great. I feel like you can draw some similarities there. Yeah, but it also depends on his, his ally's ability to help him. And the nice thing that they have against Najin is that there are going to be a bunch of heals and shields coming in onto space, and Najin is a very burst-reliant composition. If Lissandra can't take somebody out, and we saw that she could, in fact, take somebody out last game, it really can go wrong, because Kog'Maw will just heal up immediately with some lifesteal. So they're gonna go Very for the Annie. Point. I think the Annie is really smart here, and it's one of Kane's best champions. Annie seems kind of necessary at this point, honestly. Well, you're, that... not, you're not gonna hit the LeBlanc, but you may in fact get lucky and hit space right here while he's on that more immobile champion. He's so, gonna be pretty, pretty fast wow. for the mobile champion, hard. though, when you think about Whimsy plus the uh, speed from Nami. Still very hard engage from Naja. They've got yeah. a lot of flank options with Lissandra and Maokai. This is going to be a very difficult comp to run Juggermaw against. I feel like if they if they wanted to do this, maybe Zareth wasn't the best ban. Maybe you maybe you ban uh, maybe you ban Lissandra here just to stop some of the hard engage coming in, or maybe you even ban Annie. That's that would be another good option. But as it stands, CJ will roll the dice with the Juggermaw. No one but GE can do it. Yeah. No. Yet. So like to this point, no one but GE has been able to actually pull it off. People have tried to emulate it here in Korea, but it has not been successful. We're in what, week eight now too? And and so far, yeah, GE is the only one who's been able to win a game with this composition. And they've won many games with this composition. Yeah, they're really good at it. They've won all their games, I believe, with this composition. Yeah, well, they don't lose many games. Only three so far. So, yeah, it will be interesting though. Yep. Well, here we go, guys. Can Najin tie it up, or is it going to be a CJ2-0 going into IEM? Let's get in the game and find out. Welcome to Sumner's Rift. CJ versus Najin, game number two. The Juggermaw back in action. But is Space's Juggermaw on par with Praise? Hmm. Probably not. But is it good enough to beat Najin is the question. Could be. Yeah, I'll give it a solid 50-50 there. Yeah, he does have some, some good allies. And this is a very, very similar composition. We've seen... Kuro run the LeBlanc with the Juggermaw comp before. It does add that additional bit of slipperiness. Good, some good poke and uh, some good pick potential as well. So yeah. very good champion to run with this. But where teams have failed is that the Juggermaw, if somebody gets a flank on you or if you get engaged on and you have to use the wild growth on not Kogma, then you get into a lot of trouble. So you have yeah. to be really elusive with this one in terms of staying just out of range. and. <laughs> I mean, we're dealing with more than likely a bunch of talismans and righteous glories coming into this game, tons of gap closers. The so I, I'm really worried for CJ with this composition. If they don't get a big lead early on, going late with talisman, two righteous glories, is going to be really hard. The margin of error is <laughs> quite slim. It's razor thin with we'll this composition. Of course, it is extremely good if you have the right positioning because you will constantly do damage. Nobody can engage on you. The poke is insane. You know, but I, I will say too, 
Shai's Lulu is one of the best we've seen. So yes. if anyone can kind of pull off that part of the composition, I'm, I have a lot of confidence that Shai can do that. Okay, well, CJ will be doing the same thing we saw last game that Najin did when they had blue side, wreck side jungle, which is hand over the Krugs yep. and make that work. But it's a lane swap this time around, so that advantage is not going to mean a whole lot except for damage onto Rek'Sai, and that means also Shai will be coming around in order to help out with the double Whoa. jungle. A lot of action in the mid lane early on. Yeah, Lissandra is a pretty good counter to to LeBlanc in the laning phase. Yeah, catching um, people with that W yeah, when it's, uh, it's comes in. It's pretty easy, and it, they picked that matchup intentionally, but that could have been a bit of a mind game there, Doa, because they know that Tank maybe isn't the best Lissandra in terms of team fighting, so they present this attractive opportunity to play the Lissandra in the laning phase and say, hey, you know, we'll give you this it's not a crushing matchup, but favorable matchup, I would say. And then uh, we'll see what you can do later on in the game. And it creates a hard decision for Najin. So Duke and Kane going to be coming back right now into the duo be. lane. Mad Life not there. You know, it's interesting. Shy has uh, actually 100% win rate on that Lulu so far this season with a 12 KDA, as we just saw. Yeah, he hasn't gotten much. It's been a really common ban against CJ. I think two games so far he's got them. Yeah, something like that. I remember right. So oh, nice aqua person not to do. Coming in here too, because CJ decided to go for the Krug start, they weren't able to get the lane freeze. So Duke really does have a pretty nice advantage here. Meanwhile, lane is frozen up on the top side. So Shy going to have to go pretty far forward. He'll feel relatively safe, especially since Ambition is up on the top side. Your best. Or, uh, excuse me, uh, we have Ambition heading up to the top side right now. Uh. All right. I think it said something like, I watched Cloud Templar. Cloud Templar, of course. Famous league player, now a famous caster, and now a dad. As of this <laughs> All week. at once. That's right. It all happened at the same time. It was very overwhelming. He can handle it, though. Can he? You know Cloud Templar. <laughs> I, I think he can. I've got confidence, man. He's just, he's just going to play it passive, wait for the late game, you know? He'll just jungle. Oh, tank coming in, or tank having ambition, jump onto him, or really, I guess the opposite of jumping if you're burrowing, huh? <laughs> Shy uh, they get the flash, the flash out. out there. Yeah, he used his teleport earlier too, so Shy kind of taking a hit in that top lane, but I think that's smart for Najin. I think you really do need to put a lot of pressure on this Lulu. Well. It, it just comes down to the early game, and that's what having some of these advantages, you can really punish your opponent's greed, and that's what we saw, Space and Mad Life, thinking that they could get the drop onto OQ and Kane in the same way that they did in the previous game, but with the lane swap, they lost the freeze, and you now Duke uh, is up a level as a result, and Shy a bit more vulnerable up on that top side. He's got to play it extremely safe. Do you think you are always going to just lose that freeze if you go for the crud start? Or is it possible to do both? Because if you can't, that certainly makes okay, that start a little bit riskier. It's technically possible if you send your support in the lane or something like that in order to freeze the minions. Mm -hmm. But in that case, your support has a really high probability of getting chunked if it's if it's not a a uh, a two or if it is a two v two. Right. And also, your AD carry will take more damage and it'll be slower, and your jungle layer will take more damage. You pretty much have to commit to it, otherwise you might just get mega screwed. Interesting. So you have to have somebody in the lane to divert the minions. And if you have a support there and it is a 2v2 and their 2v2 is there and you're walking in the front of your minion wave, you will take a large amount of damage if not just straight die. I like that kind of thing though. You know, I, I like being able to make those choices. Do you take the part of the early jungle camp? Certainly seems to add some strategic diversity to the game. <laughs> Doesn't seem like something that really should be changed, you know? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Because there's there are other the real counterplay to it is just getting wards in to know if they're going for the two v two or yeah. the one v one, and all in all this game, Shy's playing Lulu, so he's not that vulnerable up in that top side. He does have the whimsy to get away. He can farm from long range with the combination of health picks and clear lands. So it's not the worst thing in the world. But if he wasn't playing Lulu or another range champion this game, it would have been a disaster. Oh, Kane taking a lot of damage there. Duke managing to push back. Space and Mad Life for the moment. Ambition's going to chill out in a ward for just a moment before going back into the jungle. So, you need to be a bit careful. Oh, Korean Lissandra. Oh. 
Oh, Green and Lissandra. Ah, uh, there's the ult on to Coco. Coco taking a lot of damage. E, they're coming in. It looks like they want to get oh, a kill with Watch Chilling here. Smite on the wrong one. Uh, chilling yep. Smite on the clone. Got the doppelganger. I don't think Coco would have died anyway, but even so, Watch yeah. 50, 50 that one. Did pick the right one. Nearly a kill. Tank did use his Ignite there, too. I don't know if that was totally necessary. Well, oh, never he mind. wanted the of kill, yeah. so that wasn't able to secure a Kane. Oh, oh, here we go again. Kane coming Oops. in. Can they get the son of the Coco? Goodbye. <laughs> First blood goes to Tank. Ignite. That's not going to kill. Not doing enough damage. Mad Life not able to pick that one up. So Coco's Ignite did come up just after he died. Yeah, and wow. Very close call right there. Yeah, tight, tight timing. Tight timing indeed, but Tank able to finish that one off. Kane lurking around the mid lane. You have to be careful in these lane swap scenarios that you know exactly where the enemy support is at all times. That was a very questionable all in from Coco right there. Easily falling prey to the fact that Kane was hovering around the top side of the river. Couldn't see him in top side, couldn't see him in bottom side. Maybe you shouldn't all in like that, especially when your flash was just burned. Yep, and he likes to do that roaming. <laughs> oh, space. <laughs> well, got to be a nice confidence booster for Kane, or for uh, Tank, rather, Ooh, to interesting. Uh, get that early kill. Tank, Tank got his blue buff right there. Yeah. Uh, as we see the lane swap occurring, of course, Corky post six right now, so we'll have an easier time in the lane against the longer range of that Kogma. So that'll be the timing in which he wants to go back and try entering that 2v2 again. Getting tank that blue buff right there while the lane was pushed up in bottom, usually it's hard to get those buffs on your weak side, side where your top laner is in a lane swap, but this time does manage to secure it. But at the same time, they're not going to be able to take advantage of that because they switched their top laner back into top, so they can't invade the jungle of CJ quite as easily as they would have been able to had Corky stayed up there, kept that turret pushed up. But Coco not making any moves towards that blue buff quite yet. You see Ambition pretty far down, but he'll be able to... Oh, Pink's coming. He's just going to ult to blue right now and try and hand it off. And watch right. in the river. Good timing. Watch should stick around, actually. Doesn't he look should like know, he's going to. Or he should suspect. Oh. Yeah, now they know the blue buff's going on. Lens to clear out that ward. They have a pink ward in the river. And it will be too late. Watch already on the red buff, so no harass on the trade. Did you know that? Rumor Transfer, has Transfer, rather. Rumor has it that uh, if you dance with Popstar Ari in front of the blue buff, the blue buff will dance with you. I don't believe you. Try it yourself. I think you're just making you're just making things up. You thought I waste, made up the thing about the Jarvan crowd, time. didn't you? Yeah. I think you just made things up to waste my time, Dewa. Well, I guess. I guess people <laughs> can just tweet at you and let you know, huh? Yeah, because the internet isn't full of trolls, Dewa. We'll, it we'll is just pretend that's true. A source for accurate information since <laughs> accurate anonymous it was information. That's right. The most accurate because <laughs> it's unbiased, right? <laughs> a little bit of damage on to watch from Coco. They do have a ward there, so. They'll see it. You're just gonna have to test it in the custom game. I'm now. not. Nope. <laughs> I choose not to believe what you tell me. All right. I reject. Suit yourself. <laughs> I reject your dancing blue buff, Doa. Okay. Wow. Ambition going really deep. Watch in a lot of trouble, and there's another kill or a kill coming in for Mad Life. Tidal wave comes through. They get the flash from Kane. Shy coming down those. Oh, flash glitter lance. Kane in trouble. There's a wild growth to knock him up. Another one from Ambition. And a kill for Shy, and this could be an easy dragon now for CJ Antis. Just another overextension by Watch. I mean, I don't know I what to say. So. Watch has been going in way too early. The team just yeah. isn't there to follow up on some of these engages that Tank and Watch have been making throughout this series tonight. Now, I feel like there we're is humiliated Watch face. <laughs> it kind of looks like. You know when you, you find your dog has done something that it knows you don't like and it has sort of that like guilty face on it a little bit? You're like, was somebody playing with the couch cushions again? The watch is like, yes, it was. <laughs> it's really just a, a very overbold engagement right there from the Lee Sin. And yep. I guess I don't really understand fully what the rest of the plan was surrounding that play in the first place. Sure, you could kick somebody out, but they weren't going that far into the river. 
you know? I think I would like to see Peanut in this game. Yep. Well, at least we know Najin isn't a history of questionable roster decisions this season. <laughs> it's a good thing this is kind of a, a weird, zany thing for them to do, huh? Truly. They haven't been using substitutions in yeah. very very questionable manner so far. But hey, no Zephyr right now, at least. It's true. Could have gone with Zephyr this game. OQ's been doing really well so far this series. OQ yeah. and Duke have really been on point. The other three of his teammates, maybe not so much. Rek'Sai coming in. Looks like maybe a play here. He does find Watch, and they probably saw him put down that ward as well, too. Wow, they want to die. Oh, boy, they are going to. Mad Life, maybe a little bit of trouble flashing out of range of tank. They're going to go in, kicking Ambition back. Teleport from Duke comes in. Looks like they'll be able to get a kill on the Rexai. Meanwhile, Space got ulted. Kog'Maw needs to be a bit farther back than that if you're going to live. Really good play from Najin. Yep. Right there, that was an abuse of uh, Shy's teleport timing since it was down earlier. Oh, they wanted to set up a play. Coco comes in. OQ oh, will wow. not Duke. live. Burned down by the Ignite in the yep. end. Last tick coming in to finish it off. Now Kane wants to get this turret, but the difference is, well, a couple kills come in. Shy is going to be able to take down that top lane tower, and OQ isn't there with the Sheen to burn down the tower on the opposite side of the map. CJ got the dragon in that last teleport. Meanwhile, they get a couple kills, lose one, but they looks like they're going to lose a tower as well. So. Really not worth it in the end for Najin. Two for one, except they lose the tower. Yep, seems that way. Let's take a Let's look at this again. One more time. I think the idea was good right here. Flashing in, tank a little bit out of range. Flash and kick from Watch. Ambition does get melted. Space tries to come in and help out, but gets immediately frozen to miss on the Tibbers as well. Kane airballed that one. Yep. Which is interesting, too, because uh, early on, he was one of the better Annie's in the league. Nice Coco Ignite. comes in for an easy one there. Yeah, Ignite cutting through the heel as well. Yep. So the tick will kill him in the end. Coco waltzes back out, and that'll be a nice pickup for him. So in the end, Dodgen tries to make a play. They get a couple kills, but trading one in return, and don't take a tower, so. Najin still really coming out ahead after those last two teleport plays. One by each team. The two Morello Namicons on to uh, CJ right now. A little bit more power coming out of the mid top at the moment. Now the advantage again, the farm advantage going to OQ. Because he was able to get the freeze early, that really affected his ability to farm because he was able to pull, pull it back towards his turret make sure that he could control the wave, get as much CS as possible. So he's going to finish the Trinity Force early. And he's their big hope right now. Najin needs to make use of this mid-game power spike, even though they are behind in gold. And the tank's not doing too bad himself either. Two kills, a little bit of damage onto him as well. Yep. So They've this got is, a chance. This is really the critical point. Lissandra's burst damage, when you have that kill advantage, you have to be able to take somebody like Space out. So a lot of it's, I think, going to be about this next dragon fight for Najin. They're going to be very comfortable in their power spike, and CJ will be a little bit more vulnerable. Oh, Tank with the ult on to Coco there, but Shy coming in from behind, and an easy kill for CJ. Tank kind of walked right into that one. No vision, and Shy just walked down some... there. Yeah, I know. Well, Duke. Duke looks like he wasn't in lane, so they, there wasn't really anyone there to see Shy come, but Tank a, a little bit dangerous to go in like that. Yeah, he got baited in. Yes, he did. So that'll be his first death of the game, but extremely helpful. Shy's just been making plays all over the map. We talked about the threat that his Lulu represents, having drawn so many Lulu bans this season, and finally uh -oh. gets a chance to pull it out again. I think Space and Mad Life are going to be... Are they really going to walk up to that? There's I a ward it. right here. They know they're there. If they, Yeah, they should absolutely know that they're there. Yeah, should be pretty safe. A minute until that next dragon. Looks like Watch has already gone back a bit. Kane's still waiting for a chance. He's got his flash. And if they can win a fight right now, right before dragon comes up, oh, that can help them even up. They're going to try to make this. Here we go. There's the scarring lane. Ken's, he's going to drop the Tibbers on the Mad Life. So an easy kill for Najin there, but teleport coming in for Shy. Kane already down here. Ambition wrecking people. It's going to be a wild growth onto Shy. A kill for Space already, and there's one for Coco. Really nice fight from CJ. Beautiful bait from CJ. Look yeah. at what happened right there. They knew they were in the brush, and so they, they sweep the brush to cause 
dodge into kind of panic right there. Look at the spread on Space and Mad Life. No way you can hit Tibbers with both. So they were absolutely ready for that. Coco was sitting inside the dragon pit so that he wouldn't be seen by any wards in the river so he could come over. Great, great planning and setup from CJ, and what a beautifully executed play overall. Yeah. Wow, really good. I mean, that's a time, too, where Mad Life is just like, all right, I'm just going to make myself a target that they can't refuse. They can yep. blow up Mad Life, and we saw what happened afterwards. And when they let them, it's a bit of a mind game at that point, too, because when you let them sit there for so long in that bottom side, you feel like you have to make a play, otherwise you wasted that time. Yeah. And the fact is that by using the lens or using the scrying orb, they kind of force a panic decision to be made right there. Yep. And considering that they're already in that mindset of we want to get a kill, you can force them to make a very instantaneous bad decision. And that's what happened right there. Kane took the bait, hook, line, and sinker, could only hit one person with tippers, and even that bad life did, everyone else just waiting in the wings. Great play from C, really nice. Still could be a bit of a risky dragon. We'll see if they want to stop it. No tippers though, so I think Najin is going to be uh, it's going to be tough. Okay, they're going to teleport. Duke coming in, but CJ already on the disengage. Yeah, Duke just had to cancel that one. He can get top turret, so at least Najin gets something out of it. But CJ now with two dragons with three turrets, massive lead compared to game number one. Yep, and this is the kind of lead that I that I think they needed against this heavy engage composition. They should be in good shape now. Uh, they've, they've earned themselves a little wiggle room in terms of using their abilities with this lack of a frontline composition. Coco coming up too, but he decided, nope, he turned around, he's going back up again. I don't know if they're going to be able to kill Duke though. They have no vision topside. I think yeah. Coco should never have even walked up there in the first place. Super dangerous. So they can, they can take their victory. Tower does go down. First turret of the game for Najin. Shut up, Nami. None of that. She never listens to you, does she? No, go? she doesn't. These people are picking her less now. <laughs> I like Nami, I just don't like that skin. The singing is too much for you. Remind me never to take you to the opera. Well, that is not opera. <laughs> no. We can go to we can go to the opera. Okay. But what do you want to go see? Uh, not Nami. <laughs> I don't know this what. This is the game of does Doa know any operas? <laughs> uh, what's the one with? Uh, <laughs> what's the one with Ride of the Valkyries? Let's do that one. It sounds it's exciting. The, the ring cycle. Get some Wagner in there. Yeah, yeah, great. I'll bring my tiny binoculars. <laughs> I have to go get some tiny binoculars. Remind me of that. Mix them up on the way. Make such a good team. You can just know Star Wars. I'll know, you know, actual culture. Oh come on! <laughs> Jeez, you're so mean sometimes, man. Well, that looks delicious. What's in there? It's I a, don't know. It's, it's a mystery bucket. She didn't even know. She was entranced. Not by the opera, though. I don't know, man. I'd rather go to a museum and look at some good Renaissance art than, than go to an opera, frankly. <laughs> if I want to talk about that, we could talk all day. <laughs> they're, they're not mutually exclusive. You're the theater guy. <laughs> it's true. With all the connotations that entails as well. <laughs> You're the theater guy. Indeed. Well, it's like going to be in a bit of a lull for a minute here. Guess so. Bad life just No! <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> Nami! Wow, I got the full channel on I that know, one, too. Right. They know, they know I hate it. I'm just gonna follow Mad Life around some I more. I enjoy it. Now I like it's, the Mad camera, Life. it's the camera lock on Doha's least favorite skin. Uh oh, man. It'd be like me in Super Galaxy Rumble. We, you know, you gotta be careful when you lock the camera on Korean players. <laughs> you get a little bit dicey sometimes, I've heard. <laughs> well. Yeah, I mean, Ryan might have to step in on that one, right? <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to. I wasn't going <laughs> to take it any further than that. But if you want to, go ahead. Go ahead. How much do I want Riot to hate me? It's a dangerous game we play, though. It's you walk a dangerous the line. Game. That's right. I'm well, like, I'm like Johnny Cash. The w do you? Yeah, I walk the line. Or are you in the ring of fire? One of the two. Yeah, well, well, the world's eyes will be on us next week, so. 
behave. <laughs> I'm trusting you with this. Wow. Your trust has never been more misplaced. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. Oh, well. I'll deal with it. I'll take you down with me, though. It's OK. We go down together. OK. Sure. If we were on the Titanic, we, we'd go down on the deck with, we, mi with mics in our hands. We could both fit on that door. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't need to be one of us. We're both pretty skinny. <laughs> There's only room on the door for one, though. No way, man. It's, Myth it's Chobras, I'm sorry. Mythbusters <laughs> tested this, dude. Well, I'm from Minnesota, man. So, like, in that in icy water like that, I'm like, yeah, no big deal. I'll just wait. You guys take the first one. I'll wait for the next one. Turret damage coming in. Oh, there we go. Flash Timbers hits Coco at the end of his W, though, so they're not going to be able to follow up. That distortion got him away just in time. Close call, though, but Kane... So far, hasn't quite been able to make the plays that we saw from Mad Life on that Annie. All right, and here comes the Siege. It's so difficult to stop this with the Juggernaut composition that's in the lead because Space is able to walk up on every turret. You can't hit him with skill shots due to the whimsy. And even if you do, number of shields, quite intimidating. I got to say, you know, CJ's playing this Juggernaut strategy pretty well. Right, and the Rek'Sai is so good for it, too, because you're yeah. able to split push. As we can see right now, you can't split push with Lulu with this strategy normally because she has to be there with Kog'Maw. Uh, but you can with Rek'Sai, so it adds a little bit more of a dimension to it. And that's another turret going down. First tier two of the game for CJ. Yeah, execution is really quite good. Yeah. I suppose we shouldn't be too surprised because they've shown a lot of ability to play around Lulu's speed before with some of these Rengar comps from Ambition as well. That's true. So they have had, and their their team fighting is, is very good overall. You know, the thing is as well is that CJ needed to diversify their strategy a little bit, and I think this, this is, is a, good. It's a good direction for them to go. The problem is, is that Coco's still on this LeBlanc, which has proved to be pretty bannable. It's really good for CJ that they showed they can play Victor tonight and showed a lot of skill with it because Coco has been sitting in this champion pool hole where he's got two champions. Oh, there's a nice poke on to watch via Coco. Yeah. He's got, he's had two champions with, which both play into double AD compositions. So if you ban out Cassidy and LeBlanc in the past, you basically force CJ into double AD. Yeah. And then you really know what's coming. So they become quite predictable. With a victor, that will be less of an issue, I feel. That's three dragons now to zero in favor of CJ Entis. Four turrets to one. Much, much more one-sided game. And, and, uh, like we said, this is a pretty pretty big one if Najin ends up losing the Series 0-2. It more or less, uh, barring some sort of miracle, knocks him out of playoff contention. Yeah, it would be a, a very long shot for them to get in the playoffs. But yeah. Still a chance, but very unlikely. Very unlikely. But that's not really it for Najin, because I really feel that Najin has the strongest team in, in Korea on paper. I mean, their their roster is pretty stacked here. And they can use the rest of the season to fix some of these issues, continue to give players like Tank and Peanut some experience in the booth, and come around, come out of the gate stronger in the next season and try and make a, a run at it right then. So Najin has the strongest roster on paper, according to Monte Cristo. Yeah. Wow. Really? Especially if it rolls back into an assassin meta and Goon comes around again, because Goon at his best is a top three mid laner in Korea for sure. Peanut looking like a very strong pickup just mechanically. And then a, a Duke and OQ, arguably the best at their positions in Korea. Of course, you have Smeb and Prey as well, but uh, that you could make some contentions there. So With a bit more development, a bit more game sense. And we haven't had a world since Season 2 that didn't have an Ajin team, so it <laughs> seems kind of inevitable, doesn't we it? We did Season 1. Uh, season, yes, yeah, Season 1, you're right. <laughs> yeah, Sword was at, uh, at the Season 2 World Finals. Or World Championships, not the Finals. Yeah. yeah. So, we'll see, but... I think Najin made some smart, some smart acquisitions to help their team grow and see what they can do. But even if they lose here and make it even a longer shot for them to make it into the playoffs this season, I think that in the long term they're they're going to be set up for some nice success. Well, Tank doing his best to defend that mid lane turret. CJ 
Has a good opportunity to put a lot of pressure on this Baron, too, if they want to, but why stop sieging? You know, that's what this comp is good for. Yeah, you definitely don't want to do Baron with this composition. This comp is designed to just siege mercilessly. Yep. And there's Ambition, split pushing on the opposite side of the map. He doesn't really have a good place to Void Rush to, actually. Good point. This could be dangerous if Naja decides to engage. But with Maokai heading out into the bottom lane, looks like that's not going to happen. Yeah, there, isn't, there isn't enough vision for Najin to know that right now. So CJ playing a dangerous game, but they are doing Oh, Coco gets caught. They manage to lock him up with Lissandra, and that's a kill for Tank. Okay, there we go. He was getting a little bit uh, crazy with the poking that he was doing. So I'm actually not too surprised to see him get caught like that eventually. Well, and especially this composition. Against yeah. what Najin's playing, there is such a small margin for error. And now Najin turning things around. They want to get some of these turrets. They're really actually not that far behind for being three turrets down. The farm advantage is theirs across the board, and it's pretty even in kills as well. Well, when you move around and you do a lot of sieging, that doesn't really give you a lot of CS, and CJ will go for that Whoa, Baron, it looks like. Okay. No vision for Najin, but they've wow. got to know what's up. Oh, CJ wow. should not be allowed to do this right now. This should be very easily punished. Najin's just tunneling on the turret. Do they? I mean, they have to know. No, they don't know. They don't know at all. Wow. They I think it gave up a Baron. Seems like it should That's be obvious. Uh, now with the siege potential of this composition, the Baron buff is going to be absolutely huge. Yeah. So really, Najin. See, this is your fault. Oh, there's OQ. Oops. Oh, he checked it again. He's like, he didn't believe it the first time with the he's rocket. Like, this time he's like, the phosphorus bomb. The truth dawns on him. Yeah. That is the, the face of the truth dawning on OQ. <laughs> OQ. Didn't believe the Baron was gone. He hasn't had any OQ moments yet tonight. He's actually Not been really. doing really well. It's kind of sad. It's kind of sad that he hasn't died randomly. <laughs> well, you know, it's one of the things we look forward to with Najin games. Let's let's not, you know, let's be honest here. It's one of the highlights of their play style. <laughs> it is amusing. But they need to be winning for that to happen. That's uh, that's the problem. All right, here we go. Uh, they're gonna try to catch space here. A lot of damage onto him, space and a lot of wow. trouble. They do manage to pick him off. Great chaining of CC. <laughs> Tank with the zonies at the end. Well, guess where Coco was? Not with the rest of the team. Yeah. Ambition was off split pushing as well, so they didn't have as much damage to counteract that engage with. Part of the thing is that, okay, well, they made the Kog'Maw live a long time, but you have to punish them for blowing all of their cooldowns onto the Kog'Maw, and that happens by having the LeBlanc there and the burst as well and the mobility to clean up some of these fights. So CJ can't 1-3-1 one, one split push with this competition. That's not really That's, an option. It's a very valuable Baron buff gone too for CJ. You can see this siege just is not as strong. They killed the turret almost and here we go. Watch coming in. He flashed for that one trying to get onto Shy. His Dragon's Rage Duke, is Duke, done Duke, though Duke, but Duke, Duke to his advance. Shy flashes gets caught anyway. Arcane Smash knocks him back. Shy trying to live. The Whimsy gets him away. Meanwhile, Madlife gets the kill onto a tank in the mid lane. What happened there? Coco helped out. It looked like as well. And Ambition in a bit of trouble walks in that pink board. He's going to tunnel over the wall to try to get out. Watch in a bit of trouble again. Nice Aqua Prison for Madlife. And that's Shy. a kill for Shy. Team back in. That's a dead turret. Who needs space anyway, huh? Ambition with the wild growth. He's going to stay alive. And they're going again. They take down Kane this time. And CJ, man, the team fighting from these guys turning these engagements around. It's really something else. Yeah, after making that mistake, they do manage to pick up some kills as they move around the map. And yeah. Shy has just been outstanding so far tonight. You really can't give him too much credit right now. His positioning and his uh, his counter TPs, he'll find a way to get right back into the mix, especially with that lower cooldown or the lower timer on his recall. Powered recall right there helping out quite a bit. Uh, Timbers and ult are up. There we go. They try to ult. Well, Tank just ults himself, I guess. That's not going to help him out too much. He's going to zone his ambition. Takes a lot of damage. Our Coco goes in, but he gets caught by the W. A kill for space anyway. Turret down. Now the inhibitor vulnerable. Space so fast right now. The Juggermaw is trying to get away. Can't avoid the twisted advance. A nice wild growth. Maybe they can save space this way. It looks like the damage might be enough. Shy helping out as well there. And now it's just Kane and Duke. That's not going to be able to take out space. Kane getting poked very, very low. Coco with the chain slows up Duke for just a moment. Space still needs to kite this one out, but it's going to be another kill 
for CJ. Meanwhile, Shy going in on a cane, and it's going to be an ace. Only losing ambition and mad life, and that's another inhibitor for CJ. Well, it hasn't been a perfectly executed juggernaut composition, thanks to yeah. some weird split pushing going on from CJ, but they showed that when they actually group with it, they can really make it work right there. It's been about as close as we've seen outside well, of GE. That, it, when they get together, that's when they're they're playing it properly, I feel. It was just right. a mistake in attempting to split push with Coco that really cost them uh, some in the mid lane, even though they did recover gracefully thanks to Shy's teleport. They're going to find themselves with a fourth dragon stack to none for Najin in this game. And that is bear that is dragon number four as well for CJ now. Let's take a look at how this went again. Ambition getting some zone off onto the tower, gets out with the tunnel. Coco tries to deal some damage to Tank. Tank goes in, ults himself, but space so fast, so many shields again, uses the Blade of the Ruin King on Tank, and then autos him to death, and Coco just poking anyone who tries to engage, so they decide to go all in right here. Duke pops the Righteous Glory, uses his ult right there, they get back into the back line, but Coco right there to take out OQ, and that's the problem when you have this LeBlanc on the enemy team, they don't even end up killing space yeah, you, in the end. If you dive onto this hyper-shielded, hyper-fast Kog'Maw, there's nobody protecting your own AD carry. And, right. And makes it easy for Coco. Indeed it does. And Shy there just with a the follow-up kill. No mana, but does get him with an auto attack. And now CJ just powering through. Two inhibitors down. The game is theirs. Yeah. Well, Shy's got a Majizen at 506. Can't really argue with that pickup. Really good to see CJ diversifying some of their strategies again. And the foresight and planning in the games tonight has been really fun to watch, particularly that setup in the bottom lane, which they really just out mind game their opponents. Yeah, I mean, going into this week, CJ was like, all right, how are they really going to be able to do against Najin? But now, no doubt in my mind, these guys are back to back in form easily. Well, looks like not having a place to practice last week, maybe he did hurt them against SK Telecom. What I still think know? SKT the better team, but. SKT played really well. Oh, Tibbers not catching Coco quite in time. He tried it. And here we go, Coco going deep. That's an easy kill on OQ. Wild Growth comes in, knocks up Duke as well. Ambition getting into the back lines. They try to come back onto Shy now, but I don't know what Duke's planning on doing there. Turret down, and CJ may be able to just end it here. It looks like they will. Watch a little bit trapped out. Kane extremely low. They're going to get another kill. They want an ace. Only watch alive yet. There is nothing he can do to stop CJ from getting this 2-0 and proving that they may have missed a step against SKT, but they are still a top team here in Korea. GG. Shy 2. What a great game on Lulu. Proving once again why so many teams try to ban him out, ban that Lulu, ban that Dr. Mundo. He had a great game on Maokai. I think the meta really shifting right back around in Shy's favor. He may not do so well on some of these carry champions, although I do miss his Aurelia and his yeah. Jax very much. But that was a little bit earlier on in his career. But man, is he good on some of these utility tanks. Maokai, Mundo, Lulu. Well, Shy would not have lasted as long as he had without the ability to pick up other champions and become sure. just a master of them. And I yeah. want to see his Aurelia again, though. I would love to see that. I want to see his Jax again a little <laughs> bit more, honestly. But I don't think we're going to see Jax anytime soon. But we did see a 2-0 for CJ Antis.